Jason Palmer, one of the hosts of The Intelligence, The Economist's daily current affairs podcast. The Economist's award-winning shows make sense of what matters, from our special series on China's president to our weekly podcasts on business, technology, and American politics. Our journalists provide fair, in-depth reporting on the events shaping the world. To get the annual plan for less than two dollars fifty per month, search for Economist Podcasts Plus to start listening today. This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode twenty six thirteen. We decided to pay cash for everything. Here's what happened next, by Jason Price with PTMoney.com, and I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. We're going to get right to today's post as we optimize your life. We decided to pay cash for everything. Here's what happened next, by Jason Price with PTMoney.com. Do you pay with cash, debit, credit, or a combination of the three? Some people use credit cards to pay for all of their expenses, earn rewards, and then pay the balance off each month. Others use cash or debit card for everything and follow the viewpoint of Dave Ramsey. Credit card rewards aren't worth playing with fire that can lead to overspending and possibly debt. Also, the research shows that we tend to spend more with credit cards versus paying with cash. My wife and I used credit cards as our primary form of spending for years. A few months ago, we decided to make a switch to go all in with Dave Ramsey cash envelope budgeting, and honestly, we've never been happier. We paid off our credit card balances and started using debit for bills and regular expenses, and cash for everything else. Sure, it took some work to make the transition, some behavior change in giving up earning miles and rewards. However, making the switch has provided some benefits that we never would have expected. Here are five benefits we found after deciding to pay cash for everything. Number one, we stop spending ahead. While we've always used a budget and track spending diligently, we found ourselves spending ahead more times than was probably healthy. We would choose to spend ahead in the areas of entertainment or dining out. Or we would spend ahead on the kids when we felt they needed something for school or for some other activity. The convenience of the credit card made it easy to spend ahead a little bit and figure out how to pay for it later, or just balance it out at the beginning of the next month. Doing so put us in a catch-up mode. Overall, we're not talking about a lot of debt, and we still had constraints not to spend ahead to an unmanageable amount. However, doing so is never a good practice. And can add up if you're not careful. It also started to cause stress in our relationship, and we knew that was a symptom of what could become a larger financial problem. Since making the change to cash and debit card, our choice to overspend has simply disappeared. Why? We believe it's because we're now forced to solve problems or to simply wait until the money is available. Number two, we problem solve more. Paying by cash and debit card. Has forced us to become better at problem solving. As mentioned, we wouldn't solve our shortage problem; we'd just spend. Now we have to problem solve. We have to seriously evaluate the necessity of our expenses, force ourselves into saying no a lot, and spend only what we have available in our account or cash envelopes. We can't use credit cards to bail ourselves out, even if it's a small amount. Our only source. If the gap is truly a need and it's large enough, is to use our emergency savings account. That's obviously something we'll always do our best to avoid, unless it's absolutely necessary. Number three, we experience less financial tension. While we never argued about money or why someone had spent money on something, we did experience tension when reviewing our budget and finding shortages. This led to stressful discussions from time to time. However, now that we pay with cash and debit card, we haven't felt this type of tension in over six months. Why? I think we're more thoughtful about our planning. It's simply more difficult to use cash versus the convenience of a credit card. If we don't have it, we can't spend it. Easy as that. Number four, we've stopped micromanaging our finances. Actually, I'm the one who has stopped micromanaging our finances. We used to use money management software and have since transitioned to cash envelopes and a spreadsheet to track our regular expenses. That was a big shift for me. I use software to track everything to the penny. I found myself tracking and reviewing spending daily, and sometimes it would take a lot of my time to review the receipts 
enter them into our software, review budget balances, etc. Our finances have been greatly simplified with cash envelopes. There really isn't any tracking to do other than thinking about how much we're going to spend per week. The checking account is super easy to manage because there aren't many transactions. Just the bills or stuff we know we have to pay for with the debit card, online purchases, etc. And number five, we conveniently have cash on hand. I used to swear by the convenience of a credit card. I would purchase everything using my credit card, track the expense, and then assign to a budget category. I always knew I needed to carry a little cash just in case I needed it, but I never did. And it was always a pain when the kids were at the park and wanted a cash-only treat, or when we needed money for valet and I didn't have it. I always reasoned a credit card was absolutely the most convenient and safest way to pay. I no longer believe that. There's a great convenience about having cash that makes it handy to pay for little things and you never have to make an emergency run to the ATM. And a debit card can easily cover electronic purchases in your budget. Final thoughts on deciding to pay cash for everything. You already know that to pay with cash or debit is nothing new. Dave Ramsey has been preaching about the benefits for years. Now I can agree in confidence that it works and does make a difference it certainly offers more benefits than just staying out of debt. You just listened to the post titled, We Decided to Pay Cash for Everything. Here's what happened next by Jason Price with ptmoney.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. Something always comes up when you're running a small business. Any business owner will tell you that. Running a business is just plain hard endless to-do lists, employees to take care of, and your ever-present bottom line. So if you're a small business owner, kudos to you for staying on top of it. And now I have a solution for you. I wanna tell you about Gusto. Gusto built an easier and more affordable way to manage payroll, benefits, and more. They help over 300,000 businesses by taking the pain out of tasks like automated payroll tax filing, direct deposit, health insurance administration, 401k, onboarding tools, you name it, Gusto makes it easy. And they really care about the small business owners they work with. Their support team is attentive and helpful. And since money can be tight right now, you'll even get three months free. Just go to gusto.com slash OFD and start setting up your business today. You'll see what I mean when I say easy. Again, that's three months of free payroll at gusto.com slash OFD. Truth be told, I never pay cash for anything. I go to the ATM so infrequently that the last time I needed some cash, I realized that my debit card had been expired for six months and I had no idea. However, there was a time in my life that I needed to teach myself how to not overspend. In my 20s, I was financially illiterate. And at 28 years old, I found myself in 30 grand of debt simply because I wasn't paying attention. I was swiping my credit cards and living beyond my means. I needed to learn how to spend intentionally. And so using my debit card for everything was a great way to do that. While I didn't do the cash envelope thing, I achieved the same result. I became hyper aware of how I was spending money, which led me to be more intentional with spending over time. Once I was out of debt and solved my issue with overspending, I easily switched back to credit cards. I prefer to spend on credit cards because they're safer when it comes to dealing with fraudulent charges and you can dispute charges more easily. If there's an issue with a charge using a debit card, I have to fight to get my money back. But because I primarily use my credit card, my checking account is always protected. Also, if I purchase something and the company doesn't deliver on the product or service, I can sick the credit card company on them to get a refund. Since getting out of debt, I pay my credit card balance in full every month, so I don't incur any interest charges. That should do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. I'll be back tomorrow as usual, so I'll see you there on the Wednesday show, where your optimal life awaits.